Wolfpack. I'm Marie Milanes. And I'm Hara Sakib. Today is Tuesday, May 12th, and we are here with your distant learning news. Let's check out a story from Matthew Lee. What's up, Wolfpack? I'm Matthew Lee, here to discuss the ethnic implications of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported that COVID-19 has had a disproportionate effect on the African-American and Hispanic Latino communities. From a study of 580 hospitalized patients, the CDC states that 33% of hospitalized patients were Black compared to 18% in the community and 8% were Hispanic compared to 14% in the community, suggesting an overrepresentation of African-Americans in the number of hospitalized patients. In Chicago, African-Americans make up 30% of the population, but 46% of the city's positive cases and 60% of total deaths. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot recently spoke with MSNBC about the city's response to these disparities. We started educating people uh, through a racial equity rapid response team to talk to them about the virus, uh, disabuse folks of the notion that black people can't get the virus, um, and really to connect people up with services and made sure that we have a feedback loop continuously going between the neighborhoods and our emergency operation response. So what accounts for this highly disproportionate effect on these specific communities? The CEC suggests the fact that ethnic minorities are more likely to reside in more densely populated regions due to racism and segregation, which can lead to more adverse health outcomes, underlying health conditions, and lower access to health care. In addition, many of the people in these communities have also continued working out of necessity. Nearly a quarter of employed Hispanic and Black or African American workers are employed in service industry jobs. Hispanics constitute 53% of agricultural workers. Black or African Americans account for 30% of licensed practical and licensed vocational nurses. Here in our own state, California Governor Gavin Newsom weighed in on these disparities. It's the cause uh, that unites many of the folks that work here in the state of California. They come uh, to public service because of a deep desire to right wrongs and deal with systemic issues. Nothing more frustrating than the disparities that manifest in relationship to public health. Well, that's all I have for you today, Wolfpack. Stay safe and keep washing your hands. Now let's see what John has for us for this week's sports interview. COVID-19 isn't really affecting me personally. I'm just trying to keep myself busy. Like, yeah, I'll get up bored sleeping, but like, I just try to keep myself busy playing video games, hanging out with my family, watching movies. Affecting golf, when it, when quarantine like first started, it was affecting, <clears throat> it was affecting golf, but like, now that golf courses are starting to open back up, it's much easier to play and get practice and rounds in. I have the drive to Go and walk, go on a run and work out. So it's just your determination and drive to want to stay in shape. Um, I don't think the virus will affect CS next season. Um, they'll be back on the golf course by spring of next year for um, just getting ready to compete, get ready for tournaments, matches, and uh, bringing home a couple trophies. Hope uh, the students this year are staying safe, staying inside, um, having fun with their families. It's really important right now, staying together with their friends, staying connected. So I hope you guys are staying safe. Well, that's all we have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Irene Milanes. And I'm Hara Saka. Remember, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. Happy National Limerick Day, Wolfpack.